nice to finally formally meet you. Thank you, thank you. Oh. I graduated high school May 26th, 2000. I used to do a lot of film photography. I don't know much Okay. I'm the Hines County District Attorney, which makes me the top. Hi guys, it's Faith Simone here. I'm Amanda Wells. Hi, it's Jody Owens. Hello everybody, this is your girl Hillary Christian. Hi, I'm Tom Beck. Enjoying my evening with the Dirty Napkins crew. Make sure... Let's go get some napkins dirty. How does a young kid... I think it's so critical. Literally, you can say bad things about me, it could be false. I had a number in my head. What's one of your more proud moments? Hmm. What would you say? <laughs> so every day is different. We're learning something new every single day. She said, well, try it. There's always something burning inside you. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Dirty Nap. Be sure to follow us on all social media platforms at Dirty Nap. Until next time, it's your host, Tay. Welcome back, and thanks for tuning in to another episode of Dirty Napkins. Today, I'll be having a conversation with Amanda Wells. She's a fellow writer, PR specialist, entrepreneur, and part owner of the historic Brent's Drugs here in the Fondren District. It's safe to say she does it all. Tune in. Let's go get some napkins dirty. Welcome back guys. Today we're at Brent's and I'm here with one of the owners, Amanda. Hey, thanks hey. for coming. No, thanks for taking the time to talk with us. Um, be before we get started, just tell us a little bit about yourself and, uh, and then we'll kind of take it from there. Sure. So um, I actually have a local PR agency um, and really have the restaurant business sort of fall in my lap. I've got two other partners. Um, in the business and we just really wanted to save this historic spot um and it's been it's been great we've i've been in it since i think 2014. okay in um, brent in brent okay mm -hmm. yeah as a partner in brent okay so well, it's cool though it's cool to kind of walk into a piece of history and love it and be a part of it a lot of history yeah a lot of history <laughs> I, I was looking some stuff up and um has it been a restaurant all 80 years like what's so, kind of the history of yeah. it so it started in 1946, um, and Alvin Brent, who was a local pharmacist, okay. opened up his own pharmacy. Um, and you know, back then, pharmacies had, you could sit while you wait on your prescriptions and order a milkshake, and it was a, the soda fountain part of the business. Um, and there was, there used to be a flat top grill behind the soda fountain. Oh, really? Yeah, and so you could sit and get a burger and a milkshake and wait on your prescriptions. Um, and then in 2008, CVS bought the pharmacy business from Brown. Oh, and so that's okay. when my partner Brad Reed stepped in to kind of save the spot because it was kind of hanging in limbo. Like, what do you do with it if it was a pharmacy business? Oh. Um, and then that's when it became like a full diner. That makes a lot of yeah. sense. Okay, so so the, it was a pharmacy at one point, and then it went from a pharmacy, and you all kind of took it over and turned it into this in a yeah, lot of ways. Yeah, in 2018, and then in 2014, we did a big renovation um, because the kitchen was still kind of a hodgepodge of okay. you know where they where they could fit in a flat top grill and that kind of thing. So we really just made the kitchen, you know, that more official. Okay. So. Why was it important for you, you and your partners, to keep Brits and pre preserve it? Why, why was that important? Oh gosh. Well, first of all, we get so many people in here that, um, like, 
older people that remember coming when they went when they went to school across the street at Dooling. Oh. They would walk over after school and get their after school. I didn't training. know that was a school. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it used to. It's a Babalu. I know you guys were at Babalu. Yeah. Um, it used to be a school. So oh, wow. they, we had get so many people like that. They're just it's a place that held a lot of memories, and oh, we have um, prided ourselves in keeping the fact that it's a place anybody can come. Anybody can gather. It's just a community gathering spot and always has been. So for Jackson to lose that, um, one of its original sure. spots would have just been tragic. Sure, so. no, I, I understand that. And I'm, and I'm glad, you know, I had a good time when we came yet, uh, yesterday and I interviewed someone at Apothecary uh -huh. in the back. And I never knew that there was a speakeasy back there. And it, it was really cool. I, I love the ambiance, the dim lighting and everything like that. So I'm glad you and your partners kept yeah. it going. How did how did like COVID affect you guys when that first when that whole thing? And luckily, we're kind of seeming like hopefully prayer yeah. that, that we're at on the back end of it now. Yeah, that's what I was just saying. We've had a, we've had a really good week this week. Um, COVID was I mean devastating, just like it the restaurant business in general. Um, we had to close for over a month, and mm. even then, it was just takeout for a while. Um, and so we've had to kind of learn to adapt sure. and. That's been interesting. Our staff has been wonderful. They, you know, they went without pay for a while because we couldn't pay our employees. Wow. You know, when you shut down the restaurant, you have hourly employees. You're they're up a creek as much as we are. So, um, but they've been great. They really just kind of stepped in and hustled. Our manager Sarah has just kept the ball rolling. Yeah. Um, and like I told you earlier, I think. We'll be 80 this year, so that's a big accomplishment. It is, that's and a big I, I think that if we if we can get through this, we should we should be yeah. around for at least another 80. Is that years. is that so, kind of the goal for you? Is that what you want to see? Yeah, I mean, I want it to stick around as long as possible, and um, thankfully we have very loyal customers yeah. that you know come regularly, and they write rave reviews about you guys. <laughs> I, I was reading through some of the reviews. I was. Someone was talking about how they would come here every morning for breakfast if they could. Uh, I was sweet. like, wow, yeah. this is uh, this is really a staple. Well, let's let's talk about you a little bit more. Okay. So you say you uh, work in PR, you or you own a PR company, uh -huh. right? What does the day to day look like of a PR? Person? Oh gosh, well it's different every day. So I've got clients that kind of run the gamut from nonprofit clients okay. to small business. Um, I even have a cricket farmer as a client, so that's interesting. Okay. A cricket farmer. <laughs> so every day is different. We're learning something new every single day, um, but we kind of step in and help small business owners because, especially those that are just getting started, just exposure is the big thing, and then telling their story, being able to say, "Okay, here's how, here's your story. We pull it out of you, and then we help you get it in the right hands." So. Okay. Um, it's, I mean, it's different every day. It can be anything from social media, taking photos, um, working with the press, of course, and then website, you know, website help, everything. We kind of run the gamut. So how did you get into that line of work? Because that doesn't <laughs> seem like something you just go to school for or something. I did. Oh, that's did you? Did, yeah, that's actually what my degree is in. It's so funny because, you know, most of us don't use our degrees. I'm actually <laughs> yeah. doing what, what I went to school for. Mm. Um, so in you, a roundabout way, I didn't always. So, <laughs> so you've always, in a sense, known kind of that you you like this side of the business. Was it a natural? I guess what I'm asking was it a natural fit for you? Yeah. Well, so I will say this: like, I, writing was always my love, mm. um, and still is. I'm I, a writer. I, I get to do a lot of writing in my world in my work. So, um, and I love like especially here in Mississippi, and that's probably honestly what I love so much about Brent's is the stories that mm. people have, like storytelling and you know everyone is made up of a whole bunch of stories and I think that's so fascinating and so this this line of work helps me kind of tell those stories for other people so it's been I kind of fell into it I, you know I didn't actually think that I would ever have a PR agency I thought I would write and tell people stories but it so evolved when you so how long have you been writing that's that's an interesting thing I mean I think people should know that about you I'm, yeah. I'm a fellow writer myself yeah. but how long have you been writing or interested in writing oh gosh since I was a kid really okay <laughs> um yeah I've always always loved it. I'm a big reader too so you know I think I think the best writers are big readers honestly um and so since I was a kid, I loved it, and then in college, I minored in journalism, okay. but did not major in it because I thought I would never make any money in journalism. Yeah, I can see, I can, <laughs> I can understand that. <laughs> but then, um, whenever I had my second child and stayed home with her, I really like kind of dove off into freelance work, so freelance writing for different magazines. Okay. And, um, anyway, and I loved loved it, and I still do a lot of it. Yeah. But um, that kind of 
you know, evolved into doing other copywriting for people and then evolved into helping them with the press. Okay. And so went right back to my PR room. I got you, right? Yeah. You, you, you switched right back <laughs> yeah. to it. So how, was this a then, you know, because you talk about PR and you talk about writing then, but you're also a part owner in this restaurant. <laughs> oh, I like, how did those two, I guess, marry for lack of a better term? Why, why did you think that was a good uh, collaboration, I guess? Yeah. Well, first of all, I waited tables actually in a diner um, all through oh, high school and college. Wow, okay. And so I, Jonathan Scholl, who's one of my partners, um, and you know, I mentioned Brad Reeves already. Mm -hmm. So Brad owned the Brents, and then Jonathan and Brad opened up Apothecary, and I actually shared office space with Jonathan because Jonathan works. He's a graphic designer and works in a lot of the same world that I do, okay. and he's a he's a good friend of mine. Um, and then we would just kind of always talk about ideas for Brents, and oh, then it evolved into well, we should talk about talk to Brad about it, and then it evolved into us all going into business together. Oh, okay. um, so really, it fell in my lap, but. Oh. Um, but it, I mean, it works. It works because a lot of people want to write about Brent's. They yeah. want to. They want to film here. They want to do. You know, and and it works. It works well to have an internal PR person. Yeah, I, be, I was just gonna say that. I was like, I bet that that's like the perfect mix, yeah. right? Like one of our partners is a PR person, yeah. so at least we know we got that's that right. under and control. Then, and then Jonathan's a very talented graphic designer, so he does all of our menus, all of our advertising, ah, and that see. kind of stuff. So I mean, it's we all kind of pitch in where we can. Yeah. Um, and then our partner Brad is a lawyer, so of course that comes in a lot handy probably. whenever you're um, in small business. So. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Good. Good. Well, what are some, you, you mentioned you read a lot. I'm a reader myself, so uh -huh. I have to ask the question, like what are some, some book recommendations you would oh, give? Oh gosh, okay. Well. From any genre, fiction, nonfiction, whatever you're interested well, in. Well, just... first of all, any every single Mississippian should have read Jessamine Ward already. I have um, not. Oh my gosh, you have to. Okay, go okay. to Lemuria before you leave. Lemuria? Lemuria Books. Okay. Um, and get all of her books if you okay. can, but she's on the coast. I'm gonna um, have to get her name from you again yeah, when we get it, when we great. break. She's great. She's a coast writer, grew up um, on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. Okay. And she is one of my most favorite. Okay. Um, so Sing Unburied Sing, I would start with that. Sing she won the National Book Award for it. And oh, wow. it's incredible. But her stories are also based here too. So like you'll see a lot of, Symbolism. a lot of that. Okay, yeah. I liked it. Um, she's wonderful. Um, let's see. Oh gosh, this is hard. It's like picking your favorite I bet, child. Right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Natasha Trethaway. Um, she she just came out with a memoir this year. Hmm. Um, that's incredible. Okay. They'll also tell you that at Lemuria. Okay, I'm gonna get both. I'm gonna get both of those. I'm gonna take them back with me yes, when I get on the should. road. Yeah, you should. You really should. I'll 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 write them down for you. Okay. Yeah, that'd yeah. be good. That'd They're be good. Great. Well. I guess, you know, to, to start wrapping this up here, something we do at Dirty Napkins rather um, frequently, we always like to ask our guests, just provide some words of encouragement to the people watching, whoever that may be, or whoever finds this interview, what's something you would tell them or what's something you would recommend to them? Oh gosh, um, well, I think this, this year obviously has been so hard on so many people for a lot of reasons. Um, and I think just like give yourself some grace. I mean, yeah. I have to tell, I'm, I'm a perfectionist by nature. And so I have to tell myself that every single day, like I got you. grace is important. Grace has been given to us and we can give it to ourselves. Yeah. So I think, you know, take a deep breath. Mm. We're going to get through the day. I got so. you. I got you. So <laughs> when you were, and I, and I said while I was wrapping up, but I do have like one or yeah, two yeah. more questions now that it's coming to me. As a fellow perfectionist, what are some mm -hmm. ways, like what are some ways or trying to see how I want to phrase this question. How do you overcome that, you know, very, very hard, um, those high standards, right? I uh -huh. think a lot of perfectionists, we have really high standards. We hold ourselves to really mm -hmm. high standards. How do you overcome that in the PR world and, or really even just in oh, owning a restaurant? Well, if you have any secrets, let me know. But um, <laughs> <laughs> I will. I'm still working on that. Um, Someone told me once, so I've got three kids, okay. and um, one of them is 16, and someone told me once, like, how would you tell her to treat herself in this situation? Mm -hmm. And like, so I have to remind myself of that, like, okay. showing my children grace, I should show myself that same grace. Sure. So, um, I think 
stepping outside of yourself and realizing you're, you're as human as anyone else is probably a good thing. But again, uh, if you have right. any secrets, yeah, <laughs> share with me. Yeah, I will let I will let you know. Because <laughs> I struggle with it, yeah. for sure. I got you. Well, in the process then, you talk, you, you mentioned your three kids. Um, I'm sure running a PR firm, being a part owner <laughs> in a restaurant, having three children, that had to be difficult um, yes. at some point. How, when you were, I guess, going through that process and you were having to make sacrifices, what were what was one of your biggest sacrifices that you had to make? With my kids? Yeah. Like, um, or I just mean, getting your business up off the Yeah, ground. I mean, time, like, and I, you know, there's a lot of guilt around that. Sure. Like, I, you know, I would love to sit. Now, granted, I've been lucky that when my kids were little, I worked from home mm -hmm. and was able to be with them a lot but um time i mean i still like i feel like there are things that i miss now because i'll have a work obligation um i do i do make them my priority but um you know there's there's guilt but i'm thankful i have two i have two girls sure. and a little boy and i'm really thankful that they have my girls particularly have been able to see a mom like do something like make something I, I want them to go after what they want right. and I think they've, they've been able to see me do that I mean granted it's not always been pretty but yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say so you know I, I look at it and from me from the outside looking in it looks like the sacrifices were worth it do you feel that way yeah I do I mean I, I definitely do um, it's been hard there have been times where I feel like I haven't given 100% to anything sure. but I think we all can identify yeah, I, with that sometimes. I agree um, but yeah, it's funny, my oldest, she actually works here as a hostess on the weekends. And oh, so wow. it's, it's funny, we've kind of pushed her into that. But um, yeah, I think they've been able to see like me and my husband work really hard for stuff. And I think hopefully that'll be in still. I think, it'll, I think it will be worth it. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. For sure. Well, Amanda, you know, a, a personal question, just kind of talking to you, yeah. right? What do you want your legacy to be at the end of all of this, right? I mean, you, you're you doing a lot right now. I mean, <laughs> you run a PR firm, you part owner in this place. Um, what do you want, I guess, people to remember about you one day? Yeah, um, I mean, I think people, first of all, like are my priority and I want, I want to be someone that has been there for people and loved people, whether it's through work, whether it's through my personal life. Um, obviously, you know, Brent's is very people-centered, um, and like I said, we have a great staff. Like, I think that, you know, by no, by no doing of my own, but sure. like, I, I want that to be a legacy, and okay. a legacy of helping people, but then also, like, Jackson, I love Jackson, and yeah. I think that Jackson gets a bad rap a lot of times. I think that... Um, there are a really great group of zealots that I like to refer to them as here in here in Jackson um, that are gonna you know go down swinging, and I want to be one of those people that that you know Jackson. We can lift Jackson up. I want to be one of those. I'm a I'm a huge fan of obviously I think I told you I'm born and raised yeah. in Jackson. Um, are you from Jackson or are you from like the surrounding area? I'm from Star, Mississippi. So, Star Mississippi. Yeah, Where is so that? At? It's like it's down 49 south okay. of Florence. Okay. Um, so if I needed to do anything, I came to Jackson. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> but, I got you. Um, but yeah, and then um, I went to college at Mississippi College. So okay. you know, spent college years in Clinton, sure. and then we've been here ever so, since. Yeah. So. Um, gotcha. And we love it. I mean, we love it. My kids are born and raised here, so that's. Okay. Well, if you could recommend one food, one item on the menu to, to anybody oh watching this, what would you recommend? Well, I'm going to say two. Um, okay. <laughs> just the, the classic Brent's burger. I think it's one of the best burgers in Jackson. Okay. There's no no frills. It's just good beef mm -hmm. and toppings and delicious. And then I love the Dreamsicle um, milkshake. So okay. it's like a, you know, the creamsicles that you would eat as a kid uh, yeah. that are yep. like the orange with the vanilla. It's, it's that in a milkshake form. Um, it's very good. Okay. <laughs> Well, I, I, I will be sure to try. I think I had the burger yesterday. I remember I had the oh, patty good. milk. Oh, well, yeah, that's also a good choice. Yeah, that was really good, by the way. <laughs> like, really good. Onions and pickles. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, I'm going to go ahead and wrap us up. It was a pleasure to talk with yeah. you. But before I let you go, I'd like you to tell the people where they can find you, any social media platforms you'd like to tell them, sure. or where you'd like to plug the business, Miss PR. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can find Brent at Brent Struggs on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Um, and then my business is The Tell Agency on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and also the TellAgency.com. And then okay. Brent's is BrentStrikes.com. Okay. All right. Yep. Well, like I said, from, from myself and the entire crew, yeah. we really appreciate you taking the time great. to We've talk with it. us. Thank you. <laughs>
All right, well, before I let you go, we uh, have a gift from you, for you, and this is from me and the entire Dirty Napkins team. It's just our way, our token of appreciation to you for taking the time out of your busy day to talk to us. Nice. So Thank this is from so us. Much. Yeah. I appreciate it. Well, Can't yeah, wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank well, y'all. Hopefully, hopefully you enjoy. Give you a nice yes, shirt to I stroll around in. Nice. So. Well, again, it's been a pleasure to talk it's with you. It's been great. I right. enjoyed it. Thank you. This Thank you. <laughs> all right. I hope you enjoyed our conversation with Amanda Wells today here at Brent's Drugs in the Fondry. Be sure to follow us on all social media platforms at Dirty Nappers. Until next time, it's your host, Taylor.